All right, let's get into the reason that we contact you to be on today. We are covering The Invention of Lying, released in 2009. This is unnatural. Why am I wearing clothes? How do you people live like this? This uh, is such a funny concept to me because it's it's not it's not the, the the religion or the political ideology that sends somebody to the street to start screaming. This presents the uh, the idea that the religion or political ideology just gives some somebody something to holler about that would have been hollering anyway. When I saw, like, I remember the first time I saw Invention of Lying, your, your, your little Where's Waldo moment was one of the, like, magic moments for the movie for me. Because that, that, it said so much. And you're passionate, like, you brought that passionate energy to this, even though you're, like, as if you were yelling about the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But you're just yelling obvious like it's it's just, it was just such a comical moment to me that made the movie uh that enhanced the movie so can you tell us a little bit about how you got that role what the audition was like um for a part like that were you asked to come in a room and just scream stuff or you know how did that play out you know i i hate to say it i i'm i'm kind of recon I, when i when i was thinking about that i was like Wow, reconstructing that audition. Um, I mean, certainly Ricky wasn't there. So I was probably auditioning for the New York casting director with the, the Boston casting director. And um, so I'm trying to remember. I think, I think it was like you had to improvise a little bit around what you were given you know, I, I, if I recall, there was room for improvisation okay. and uh, that was also, it, it was born out on the set too. So yeah. I think there were the lines that were given and then you had a little bit of license. Uh, you know, I think they were looking for maybe a particular energy, which it sounds like you were picking up on when you said, when you saw the film. And so I think they probably thought, oh, this six foot three guy standing on the side of the road in a suit screaming that at the top of his lungs that could work well so i think it was an energy yeah uh, yeah you definitely brought that sense of like somebody that is so overly confident in the things that they're saying that they're willing to scream them to pass or passers by and when I, yeah, when you I was just waiting on to be like, he's coming, the return is near. That I mean, when you said that, I'm like, wait a minute, no, that's the exact opposite. Like, wait a minute, we were born without clothes, <laughs> we were, we're homo sapiens. Let me ask you this did you try out any different lines, or did they like when you did this? Like, is that the one that landed, or was it always that? Well, this is you know, in terms of like, and I think it's Ricky's, is it his first? Directing his first time. Mm -hmm. I think it was, film, yeah. and he was working with uh, what's his name? Is it Matt Matthew or uh, uh, so Matthew Robinson? Robinson. Oh, there there you go. It's in my book. That's outside. Yeah. So it was like you know, it was like two friends, you know, working together mm -hmm. on this movie and and making it happen and that. So again, as somebody who likes chaos and likes the chaos of of film. And I think that that does lend itself to, you know, improvisation being used on film. You got to have that love of the, um, the chaos uh, that that's happening around you. And so I could feel Ricky's way of working was like, just let's get some stuff generated here. But again, that idea of, okay, we have a script. If we can get what's in the script, we're golden. Okay. But then if we can make a little free form, let's make some free form. And so when he was doing his things, um, I could see that uh, he was leaving room for other stuff to happen. So I thought, oh, hopefully when I do my little bit, we'll get to do that. So sure enough, when we did, we shot it one time and they were laughing and seem, seeming to like it, him and Matthew. And then uh, at a certain point, he goes, you know, do what you want. And so we're shooting in Lowell, Massachusetts, and across the street are all these people who live in Lowell, Massachusetts, who are watching them make the movie. So I thought, oh, I'm going to try to get them to take their clothes off. 
<laughs> so that so I'm actually so I'm yelling at the the bystanders, you know, from Lowell, seeing if I can get somebody to take their clothes off. If I look back now and feel like I have a regret, I feel like I should have been ripping mine off. I should have ended that naked. I really should have ended it naked. It's probably the one regret of my career is that I didn't go all the way and just strip my clothes off and get naked. I think Ricky would have loved it. I just didn't have the the confidence at the time uh, to yeah. do that. But anyway. I could see that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see that to be a, a wise decision. But I personally like the fact that you're screaming these things about why are we wearing clothes while not taking your clothes off. It's almost <laughs> like that projection of like, I don't know if I really believe what I'm saying. I'm hoping that yeah, they believe you, know, you, you will. Yeah. You can tell that it was so natural because when I watched it, did a rewatch the other day, you can tell Ricky G is not, doesn't know you're going to say that. Cause he walks by, he's like, <laughs> like, like he, he didn't yeah. know that that was going to happen. It's very rarely he gets thrown off, but I can tell that somewhat surprising what you were saying. Like, Take your clothes off. Well, we're wearing clothes. <laughs> Let me ask you a question now. Do you have a favorite memory from the set other than being there, work, working with Ricky G and, uh, and just, you know, keeping your clothes on, obviously and not taking them off. But do you have a favorite memory from set of the production, whether it's on screen or off screen? I got to say, you know, it was a pleasure when I did take a little risk. And I think it's Ricky who came up with the take your clothes off. It's just mm -hmm. the way I was doing it and how I was phrasing it. Okay. Um, that was a surprise to him. But I just remember feeling uh, really good when I saw him and Matthew laughing, like they were restraining themselves from laughing while I was doing it. And that I would say was the high highlight, you know, just like, good, I'm doing my job. It's, it's good to make someone else laugh who makes you laugh all the time. It's like, right, That's now, right. I, I, I'm, I'm at least trending in the right direction here. <laughs> there was, I got a, when we interviewed David Wayne, who's one of my favorite filmmakers oh. and just the funniest guy, he's made me laugh my whole life. And we were talking to him and I said, I said one little thing and he, he did the smallest little chuckle and my heart <laughs> fluttered. And I'm like, I could die now. I could That's die. It. I, this is it. Yeah. That's I how I felt, you know. Hours. If I can make if I can make him laugh even for a second, um, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. But let me ask you this: Before we move on from the invention of lying, is there anything else you'd like to share uh, that the the films of the fan fans of the film may not know about the film whatsoever? The, the, any inside information? I guess just a thing that I would encourage people to look for, and you, you kind of talked about that moment of like what happens to us when we believe the lie. I mean, given what's just happened in this country over the last five years or so, this whole concept of the lie and its power, mm -hmm. Ricky was a man ahead of his time there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I would just say if there's, a, if there's a hidden jewel in there, it's like, look at it now. And mm -hmm. what he was asking us and what he was saying about the power of the lie and what we can believe. If it was released now, it would be called The Big Lie. Yeah. Uh, to, quote, to quote George Costanza, I'll bring up in Seinfeld anytime I can. To quote George Costanza, it's not a lie, Jerry, if you believe it. <laughs> or if I believe yeah, you got, you got to believe the lie. Like, it's not a lie anymore. Uh, I like how the French refer to it as uh, we're beautifying the truth. Mm, alternate. Yes, yeah. that's it. Beautifying <laughs> the truth. I like that. Yeah. I'm keeping that one. <laughs>